By now, you've probably heard of Remote Patient Monitoring, or RPM, and have been wondering if it's a good program to offer to your patients in your practice. In this video, we'll take a look at the ROI of the Remote Patient Monitoring program so that you'll be able to understand the cost and reimbursements of this program to make the best decision. Hi everyone, this is Dan from ThoroughCare. At ThoroughCare, we specialize in helping groups to manage their patients in value-based programs like chronic care management and remote patient monitoring. We're going to discuss the reimbursement opportunities for this program, what you can expect to make, how to manage costs, and how to get the best value out of the program. We'll also show how this program can help you with your value-based care initiatives. If you'd like to learn more about the specific CPT codes that are available for RPM, we have another video in our series that focuses on those codes. In this video, we're gonna talk about the reimbursements and the ROI for RPM. Let's start by looking at the revenue opportunity for RPM. With this ROI example, we're going to look at setting up the program and implementing it for the first year. In this example, we'll be managing 250 RPM patients each month. First, we'll need to purchase RPM devices for your patients. When you're purchasing an RPM device, there are many different costs depending on the device, whether it's Bluetooth or cellular. We see prices anywhere from $80 to $150. As an alternative to physical devices, there are also some apps that can track vitals as well. For this example, we'll use the 250 patients at $100 per device which comes out to about $25,000. Now I know $25,000 seems like a lot, but let's start with some codes that can help you to offset that cost. The first is a one-time CPT code designed for training and education and setup of the device. This is code 99453, which provides about $20 in reimbursement for each device that you configure. With 250 patients and devices, that's $5,000 right there. Now let's look at the monthly reimbursements for RPM. First is CPT code 99454. This code requires 16 days of readings and provides around $56 per patient per month. With 250 patients, that's around $14,000 monthly just for this one code, 99454. The second monthly code is 99457. This code pays around $52 per month and it's for clinical staff spending at least 20 minutes of non-complex services to their patients each month. For those same 250 patients, that's an additional $13,000 monthly just for this one code, 99457. So for both of those codes, 99454 and 99457, that's $27,000 in monthly reimbursements. If you recall from earlier in this video, we said that our initial costs were about $25,000. We've covered the entire cost of the devices in just one month of reimbursements. So let's look at the annual reimbursements for the program as well. For 99454 and 99457, that's $324,000 in annual reimbursement. We also have that one-time device setup and education code 99453 that will bring it up to $329,000 if all the patients in our practice are participating. So what are your costs? We've already mentioned the devices at $25,000 or so. You'll also need a care manager to manage these patients each month. Each care manager can manage up to 250 patients per month. The annual salary of a care manager is around $40,000. So subtract these costs from the final total and your practice will net $264,000, all from one RPM program. Now I know you're probably thinking, yes, but that's at 100% participation. And that's fair enough. Some months patients won't be able to take their readings. You might not be able to get everyone over 20 minutes, but take these same numbers and imagine if only 50% of your practice participated you're still making $132,000 a year in additional revenue at the 50% participation level. If you'd like to play around with some participation numbers, we think 75 to 85% is a fair estimate of what you could predict each month. Keep in mind, these reimbursements can be higher with the additional add-on codes. For example, you can go more than 20 minutes by adding code 99458 to get an extra reimbursement each month. So we've talked about how RPM can generate revenue, but let's talk about other ways that it can be beneficial to your practice. While the phrase return on investment always seems to be around dollar signs, there's also another return, which is the improved health of your patient. Your patients benefit from the program by having the peace of mind, knowing that their provider and care team are looking at their numbers. 
Also, this program can be managed completely remotely. Your patients can be at home while your staff monitors the numbers from the office. By allowing patients to stay at home, there's less pressure on you and your staff. It also creates opportunity for more high-risk patients to be seen in the clinic, while your lower-risk patients can be managed remotely on this program. Imagine identifying an issue with your patient's blood pressure and preventing them from being taken to the emergency room or the hospital. This is a great return on your investment that's only shown by the improved health of your patients. This leads to an overall improvement of quality care as you start to manage your value-based care initiatives. A program like RPM also helps practices to manage their merit-based scores like MIPS and improve overall satisfaction and quality. As you can see, offering an RPM program has many benefits, increased reimbursement, improved patient satisfaction, and overall improvement of patient care. This program more than pays for itself. So now that you have a better understanding of the return on investment for RPM, you're most likely gonna to wanna to get started. If you're interested in how care coordination software can help you with a program like RPM, you can contact a thorough care representative to schedule a meeting and see a demonstration. There's a link in the description below. You can always find more information about this and other programs in our Learning Center. You can check out the links below for access to the Learning Center. If you found this video helpful, please like it or add a comment below. Thanks for watching, bye.